the world's first zoomable macro lens for smartphones and eye. So Apexor has sent over this lens free of charge and they are the sponsors of this video. But this one is a very interesting lens because it's the world's first zoomable macro lens for smartphones and eye. And in this video, I'll be comparing it to their 100 millimeter macro lens. So what you get in the box is the apex or zoom macro lens the phone mount that allows it to mount to 99 percent of smartphones out there on the market you get some sticky pads to allow for better fitting to your smartphone if necessary i didn't need these so i haven't used them you use a guide a polishing cloth that you always need to clean off the lens on your smartphone because they constantly get dirty especially when they're in your pocket a 37 millimeter silicone observation lens hood this i'll talk about later in the video but this is a really smart feature of this lens and a carry pouch for your gear let's talk about fitting this to your phone as i previously stated this phone mount allows the lens to be fitted to 99 percent of the smartphones out there in the market again do your research and just double check with their website to make sure it will fit your phone but we simply place the mount onto our phone and then we maneuver it so it's above the lens that we want to use in this case it's the one times lens on my iphone 15 pro max it is not compatible with the telephoto lens just the one times lens once we have it fitted we lock it down with the screw at the top that stops it from sliding left to right and the grip that it has on it stops it from going up and down and it is a very good grip once that's been done we take our macro zoom lens and we screw that onto the adapter the lens itself is a 15 millimeter to 45 millimeter focal length with a 10 to 20 times zoom it also has a 52 millimeter filter thread for attaching polarizer filters to it so with this lens again it's a zoom lens so you get to choose whether you want a wider shot or a close-in shot of your subject and it has a 1.05 aperture which allows a lot of light to get onto your phone sensor we'll get onto light later on in the video the bokeh it produces is great the depth of field is also great and again i fully tested it out on my iphone 15 pro max so i was able to use the full 48 megapixel sensor of my iphone and able to crop in because in some instances depending on how well you fitted the lens i was getting a little bit of vignetting on my iphone but that's easily corrected by just cropping in slightly on the image let's talk about magnification as I've said, it's a 10 to 20 times magnification, but let's be honest, we don't know what the hell that means. So what I've done, is I've done some testing and compared it to a full frame camera. And the reason I've done this is if we equate it to the equivalent full frame camera, you get a good idea of the type of shots you can get. At 10 times with the focusing at the uh, infinity focus on the iPhone, I'm getting a, a 0.3 to one magnification. So that's classed as more of a close-up lens which is good so you see on this picture we can see 11 centimeters or 111 millimeters that's the amount that we're getting in our frame and this isn't taking into account the sensor size this is just a full frame equivalent and with that i have a working distance of roughly five centimeters that allows us plenty of room between our lens and our subject to get light in there and to not scare the subject away and when we go to the 20 times, I'm getting 4.3 centimeters, which is 43 millimeters, which equates to around a 0.8 to, to one magnification. So to get that same type of shot on your full frame camera, you would roughly need around a one to one magnification lens. Now the working distance at 20 times, it's, <laughs> you're almost touching your subject. It is 0.8 centimeters or eight millimeters. That is very close and i did find a lot of the times it was too close not so much for scaring the subject I, I was able to find subjects that i could photograph with that but the lens casts a shadow on the subject so it was quite hard so i found myself roughly in between the uh, 10 and the 20 so around 15 times magnification which on my chart here would be around 0 0.6 to 1 magnification so talking half life size so to get similar shots to that on your full frame camera you would have to have a close-up lens attached to your camera but i was able to get some good shots and again as always i always get bungee out to test new lenses out and the lens performed perfectly okay these images are cropped in slightly and edited in lightroom 
Now to put that into comparison with their 100 millimeter lens, it has a fixed focal length of 100 millimeters, but using the focusing slider within the apps, I'm able to adjust the magnification slightly, but this one is roughly a 0.5 to one magnification. So with the new lens, we're getting a wider range of magnification that we can use. So we can zoom out to 0.3, or zoom in to 0.8 to one magnification. That gives you a lot of freedom to move around. If you find yourself in a very tight space, we can always just zoom it out a little bit, back off, allow that light in, and to be able to crop in later on in post. Now talking of light, lighting is very difficult with any of these type of macro lenses. So again, not trying to drum it in, but being able to zoom out and back off was allowing me to get the light in there. So when you're at maximum magnification, the light is hardly ever getting in there so you are going to have to boost your exposure using the iso in your mobile device and again that can introduce noise and grain but we can reduce that with software it's again it's it's kind of a creative decision on the magnification that you use but i was finding myself again backing off a little bit to allow the light to get in there allowing sunlight in was quite difficult because the sun had to be in the right position which if i'm photographing my hands like that you can see how much distance we've got between my fingers and the lens. So you have to have light coming in at the side, but it's not an impossible shot and it was fun to use. And of course, I was also able to use this lens for video and for video work, it is a very nice lens to use. Let's talk about the silicone observation lens hood. This is ingenious, I love it. What we can do is we can take our lens off the mounting bracket, pop it on and we can use it as an observation lens. It is brilliant, really is good. And what I've been using that for is to check my sensor for dust spots. So I'm able to take the lens off my camera, have a look at it with this to see if there's any sensor dust on there. And it really is, it's, it's fun to use, to be honest with you, it really is good. And that is a great addition to the lens that I think the people at Apex or have smartly introduced and put into the box for you to use. Now the phone mount hasn't scratched my phone. I've got a 15 Pro Max. They are prone to scratches. So this hasn't scratched my phone. It hasn't damaged nothing on the phone while using it. And once it was in place, it stuck there. It didn't wobble, it didn't come loose, and it didn't fall off while I was using it, which is also a great thing. Now the only other thing to mention between the two is the new zoom one doesn't come with the light around it. But to be fair, I wasn't really using the light on this anyway. I was mostly using natural light. So for me, it didn't really affect me much by using the new lens. I don't have to get dirty while you're doing videos about them though. There we go, that's better. Commenting about that, the one tip I can give you is before you make your lens to your smartphone, make sure you give the smartphone lenses a good rub because this phone is always in my pocket. It's always has a case on there, okay? and it's a dust magnet. So before you put it on, clean your lenses on your phone, clean the back end of this lens here. So if I just take this off so you can see it, make sure you clean that part before you put it all together and that will give you the best result that you can get. So in conclusion, this lens from Apex, which is the world's first zoomable macro lens for smartphones, is a very fun lens to use. The phone mount is made out of plastic. The lens itself is made out of a metal, so it's very high quality. I get the feeling it's built to last, so it's not gonna fail on you anytime soon. I've even dipped it in water. I don't think it's recommended, but I have dipped it in water and it's still going strong. And to be honest with you, if I haven't broken it yet, then that is a good testament to their build quality. Found my iPhone was focusing perfectly okay with this lens attached. However, with most of the pictures you are seeing, I did use the Reflex camera app and I had it in manual focus. And for the settings, I mostly just let the iPhone do the settings itself because as anyone who knows who's got an iPhone, the second you start messing with the settings like your shutter speed, or your ISO, you lose the 48 megapixel option. I don't know why, that's just Apple for you. But the auto settings seem to work perfectly okay in my case. And the other point about this lens is it's not a bank breaker. Lens varies depending on the package you get from £32 to £40. That is a great deal. It's a bargain for what you're getting and it is a good lens to use. And these are one of those type of lenses you could have in your pocket when you're out and about, but you're not taking your big gear. I don't always take my big gear with me. If I'm out and about and I'm waiting for my daughter to come out of college, I'd rather take one of these 
and it's great for taking shots of insects that I see out and about. And then I think, do I want to have a stacked image of that insect? In which case I'll go back with my uh, main gear and do a focus stacked image of those insects. But it's great for just having it in your pocket when you see something that you've never seen before. And you can just get it out your pocket, attach it to your camera and snap a picture. Fantastic, it really is fun to use. I want to thank Apexel for sponsoring this video and for sending over their zoom lens. If you have any questions at all about this lens or you want more information, you check out the website or leave a comment down below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But that's where I'm going to leave this video. My name's Stuart Wood. I want to thank you for getting to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for sticking to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please subscribe and click the like button. It really does help out the channel. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for their continued support in supporting me and this channel. If you're interested in joining Patreon, then check in the description below this video for a link to Patreon. If you want to continue watching my macro journey, then click one of the videos in front of you now.